Are you ready to start creating blog posts that are visually appealing and that will capture your reader's attention from the beginning to the very finish? Then keep on watching. Hi, I'm Hanne from Thrive Teams. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use Thrive Architect not only to write your blog posts, but also to make them visually much more appealing for your readers. Now, if you've tried writing an, a nice looking blog post in the WordPress editor, you might know the frustration. It's impossible to have something that actually looks good and writing in the editor doesn't look at all as it looks for your visitors, so it becomes really complicated. Now that's where writing your articles with Thrive Architect comes in. Because you will write your article on the front end, which means that it will look exactly the way your reader will see it. Now let's dive right in. So the very first thing that we're gonna do is add a new blog post here, and we're gonna give it a title. Now you'll want to add a category to this blog post and some tags. If you need more information on that, we have a full tutorial. And one last thing over here is the featured image. Now the featured image will be shown um, dependently on your theme. It might be shown in the blog post. It might be shown maybe in the header of the blog post, or it might be shown only on the blog list. So let's quickly set a featured image here and now save this as a draft. This means that for the moment, nobody is seeing this and we can start working on our article. Launch Drive Architect. And as you can see, this looks exactly like what your reader will see. You have the sidebar here, breadcrumbs, the menu. This is the author box, the comments. So this will really show you exactly how it looks for your readers. Now, when you use Drive Architect, there are two ways to add elements. You can either click on an element, which will add it on the bottom, or you can drag elements and then you can just drag them wherever you want. Now, to start writing this article, the very first thing that I will do is start writing my introduction. So for that, let's pick a paragraph, just click on it, and this will add a paragraph in your article. So for your introduction, you want to make sure that it is something that captures your reader's attention and that is appealing enough so that they actually want to read the rest of the article. So maybe use some storytelling, use some suspense so that people can actually get dragged in and continue reading. Now, I will not go through actually writing the full article because then this would be an hour long tutorial or something. So we'll just use lorem ipsum. Now, after your introduction, you want to add a read more tag. A read more tag allows in your blog list to only show that excerpt that you really want to use to get people dragged in to the article and click that read more button. Now, this again is dependent on how you set up your WordPress website. If you are showing the full article in your um, blog list, then this will not make a difference. But if you choose to only show a summary, then adding the read more tag will allow you to to um, know exactly what will be shown to your visitors. So in here, let's go to our elements, let's go to read more. Now, while you're working on your article, I suggest that you save um, in between because currently there's no autosave in Thrive Architect. So what you wanna do is you either want to hit Control S um, so that this is the save, this is like the short code for saving, or of course you can hit this um, save button in the sidebar. Now, saving doesn't mean publishing. This is just saving your draft. So don't worry, people will not see this on your website yet. Now, after our read more tag, what we wanna do is we wanna add a new heading. Headings will help to structure your article. Now, if you're not sure how to structure an article, you're not sure what you should be writing and how you can make sure that this is actually a, a good structure for your article, then I suggest going through a blog post that we wrote about content patterns. These content patterns will really help you to know exactly what you have to write in each paragraph of your article, in each chapter of your article. So the one that I would use for a simple how-to tutorial like this one, like how to write an, an appealing article in Thrive Architect would probably what, why, how. So you would start explaining what it is, then why you would have to do that, and then how you would do it. Now when we go back here, like I said, we're gonna add a heading. 
Now, if you know something about HTML, you might know the difference between a heading one, a heading two, heading three, and so on. If you don't know, don't worry. What you need to know is that the the title of your article, so the one that you added in the backend when you created the article, this one, um, is always a heading one. This means that you will indicate to search engines that this is the most important information on your page. Now, on the rest of the page, on the rest of the, the blog post, you don't want to have any other heading ones. That's why when you add a heading here in Thrive Architect, it will automatically be a heading two. So that's perfect. You don't want to change that unless you're working further down your article and then you want to go in smaller numbers. You want to add a heading three or heading four so that you can really structure your article. But for now, a heading two is perfect. So let's say that this is our subheading. Now, a good rule for making blog articles actually visually appealing is to make sure that when somebody looks without scrolling, there's never only text on the page. So you always want to add something visual to that page. One thing that we really like to do at the Thrive Teams blog is add something that we call chapter images. So for that, you would drag an image. And in this case, we had our designers make these images from scratch. So you can just insert it in the post. Now you can see that I uh, accidentally dragged the image next to this heading. That's not what I want. So I'll just drag it above the column and then take this heading also out of the column. And now I can just delete this column element because automatically if you drop elements next to each other, Thrive Architect will create columns. So that's super easy when you're working on a page and you want to have like one of those three column layouts. But on your blog post, you probably don't want to use columns all that much uh, because you don't have the same space available. So as you can see, this is like custom designed. We have like this nice uh, arrow, but probably you won't have access to a designer, in which case I would suggest that you actually use icons. Icons are super easy to add visual elements to your blog post. So let's just delete this uh, image and let's add an icon in here. Now, depending on the topic of your chapter, you would of course pick one of the hundreds of uh, uh, icons that are available here within Thrive Architect. But for now, I'll just randomly pick something, um, maybe not the LinkedIn logo. Uh, let's just um, use this one, for example. And to make it a little bit more interesting, I would probably add something like a background style. Maybe we can even add uh, a gradient to this background. And let's turn this a little bit around. And then uh, I would add some round corners here. So I would make this a round image. And in layout and position, let's add some more padding actually block this so add padding around so that the background is bigger than our icon and then we can change our icon color uh, to white so fff that's white And now this could become each time our chapter image, because next time that I use a subheading, I can just copy this icon so I can copy it. And then rather than having to create it all from scratch, I can now simply exchange this for another available icon in this library. And then let's drag it underneath here. So this would be for our second subheading. And this would be about the why. Now let's continue writing our article. So let's add another paragraph element in here and add some lorem ipsum text. And another thing that you want to do when you are creating articles is once you've wrote the full article, you want to decide where you want to grab the reader's attention. And to do this, you can just bold certain parts of your text. Now, the important thing is that you don't bold everything because then nothing is important anymore. So here we would just bold certain words and let's just not spell check for the moment because the red 
lines are really annoying. So here you can bold the text and probably if you're writing an article, you would also have links in here. So when you want to add a link, simply select the text here, go to insert link, and then you can add google.com, for example. And you can decide whether you want to open that link in a new tab and if you want to know, follow or do follow the link. Let's insert this link. To continue structuring this article, we would continue with a heading. And in this case, because this would be underneath our heading 2, we would add this as a heading 3. And then let's add a paragraph in here and some more text. And maybe we also want another image in here. So this could be something like a screenshot where we're explaining what we're doing. So let's add this little screenshot in here. Now you can see in the size when you select an image, you can see that you have different um, sizes available. So always try to make sure that the size that you select for your image is as closely to the real size that is shown to people. Now this will allow to not load like a super big image and then actually show it much smaller, which will help loading time. So in this case, let's add this and um, I would always suggest to center align images. Now, the reason for this is that it will look much better on mobile view. So let's center align this image in our layout and positioning. We can center align it. And in our image options, one thing that I would always do when you add images to a blog post is add a caption text. Now, a caption text, as you can see, it adds like this little text underneath your image. And studies have shown that this is actually very often read by your visitors. So you want to make sure that you use this caption text carefully to convey the information that you want. So here you can just click on it and then you could change the text size or the background color of this. And let's say add caption text here. Let's add another paragraph just to finish this off. Now, another thing that you can do to make um, text visually appealing without actually, as you can see, Thrive Architect will remind you to save. So this is good. When you see this little reminder, just hit the control save so you make sure that you don't lose your work. Um, so like I was saying with the text, one other thing that you can do to make it visually appealing without having to like look for images or need a designer for this is you can add something that we call highlight boxes. So these are actually styled boxes um, that, that will give the most important information to your users. Now you can either start from scratch with these boxes. So you can use a content box and then you can add a background color. Uh, you can add a border around it. You can do whatever you want, or you can use one of the pre-styled elements. If you go into styled boxes, let's drag it on here. You can see we have a bunch of them that are already made and you can pick the one that you like. So let's say that in this case, we want this note type of uh, box, but maybe I don't like this yellow all that much. So I would go into the background style and change this yellow for like a light gray. And then once you're happy with the highlight box, you can save it as your own template. So when you click on the element, you can hit this save icon and then let's call this highlight box. And I will add it to the category that I will call blog. Add as a category. And then we can save this. So now each time when we write a new blog post, we can make sure that we use the exact same designed element on every blog post. This will not only save time, but it will also help to keep your blog post consistent. And if you want to see um, some, some more inspiration for this, we have an article on five different styled boxes that you could use in blog posts. So I'll make sure to link that up too. So again, let's make some, um, let's add a paragraph here in our second, um, in our second chapter and copy that. And like I said, now we can just drag our template in here and you can see that here we have our highlight box that's available and now it will just add the exact same highlight box in here. Now you might be wondering how you can add a video in your blog post and that's actually as simple as adding an image. 
Let's search for the video element and drag it in here. And as you can see, our source, um, you can choose YouTube, Wistia, Vimeo, and you would just pick the URL of this, um, of this YouTube video. So let's copy this URL, let's paste it in here. And now our video is available. You can go into advanced settings and from here you can choose to either show or hide the YouTube title and you can hide or show related videos. Now I really suggest that you hide the related videos because no matter if this is one of your videos or maybe um, some video that you use to illustrate your point in the article, you probably don't want people to go off and look at cat videos. So make sure to hit that re um, hide related. If you've done that once, uh, Thrive Architect will remember and the next time around it will be hidden by default. So this is how you can add a video in your content. So as you can see, super easy. There are two more elements that I want to cover in this video. The first one being the click to tweet element. Now why? Because this is just a very easy element to have something visually appealing and it will help you get more social shares. So why not? Let's add this click to tweet element in here. And now you can add the quote or the phrase that you want people to tweet out. And then when they hit the click to tweet, then this is actually going to open the Twitter, um, the Twitter box. So it makes it super convenient for your readers. And the last element is the styled list element. So this could be super helpful, um, especially if you're doing something like a review article and you want after each chapter, rather than having this uh, notebook, you would add maybe a normal content box with, let's say, um, just a border, mm, maybe like this blue border. And then in here, we would add a styled list. So one with maybe the checks, and then we could make, like you've seen before, we can make this a two column element. So let's drag it next to here. And then this might maybe be um, your icon. So here, instead of checks, you might have cross. So maybe we would add this type of cross. And then let's also for the fun change these. Um, so comment. And this would be the check mark and in here I would add some padding in this box so that the list isn't all to the side. So this is how you could add the list, the styled list element to make your text more visually appealing, to grab that attention and to make sure that people actually go through your whole blog post because in the end that's what you want them to do. You want them to read from the very beginning to the very end. One thing that you didn't see me do in this tutorial is change the color and the fonts of the text. Now, the reason for that is that automatically um, Thrive Architect will take the fonts and the size and the color of the font and so on from your theme. So when you click on something, you can see that here in the text options, you will see something that's called inherit. So this means that this comes from your theme. This is not um, Thrive Architect related, it is theme related. Now you, you can override this. So I could decide to maybe like make this text uh, bigger or change the color or whatever, but this is not really good practice because first of all, it will take you much longer to actually write your blog post. So that's not what you want to do. And second of all, it will become difficult to keep everything consistent because then you have to remember like which, which size of text did you choose or, or which color was for a heading two and which color was for a heading three and so on. So what you want to do is you want to make sure to change these settings in your theme so that you, once you drop uh, an element on the page in Thrive Architect, it looks exactly the way you want to and you don't have to change it anymore. Now, the way to do this is in your theme customizer and I can uh, link up a tutorial about that too. Now, I hope you like this tutorial and that you will start using Thrive Architect to write your blog post because honestly, it's so much more enjoyable than using the WordPress editor. Now, if you have any questions, please leave them below.